So the one that we wanted to have a look at from the homework was like this, and it's going to follow a similar kind of pattern. Apart from this time, I think they've already given us some information about the acceleration. I think this is one I was interested to hear about here. So two particles, P and Q, have masses Km and 3M respectively, where K is less than 3. If K is less than 3, what does that tell us? Good. Q is going to be moving downwards, which means that P must be moving upwards. The particles are connected by a light, inextensible string which passes over a small light Small, uh, sorry, a smooth, light, fixed pulley. The system is held at rest with the string taut. The hanging parts of the string vertical and with P and Q at the same height above a horizontal plane as shown in the diagram. The system is released from rest. After release, Q descends with acceleration one third G. So I'm going to go back to my diagram and I'm going to add in that this is one third G, which means that this one here must be one third G because the string is inextensible, so they have the same acceleration as each other. Um, calculate the tension in the string as Q descends, show that K equals 1.5, and then there's a modelling question. So I'm going to squeeze a couple of extra forces on here. We have KMG, apologies, I'm going to have to write over the top of that. That one is 3MG. For this particle P, what should you tell me about the direction of the tension, up or down? Up, up yeah, we know tension goes up because that's what it feels like, it's pulling it up. Same for this particle, it feels like the tension is pulling it up. Now, when you look at these two things that we've got, I've got this scenario for P, where I don't know what the tension is, I don't know what K is. I've got two things I don't know. When I look at the Q particle, I do know what the weight is, I do know what the acceleration is, I don't know what the tension is. I've only got one thing I don't know. So that tells me that it's much better to begin by looking at particle Q than it is to begin by looking at particle P. So I'm going to resolve in which direction, up or down? down? Down, it's the direction it's moving in. I'm going to do F equals MA, and I'm going to be looking at particle Q. What is the resultant force? 3mg minus T equals, what's the mass? 3m and the acceleration? 1 third g. So I'm going to multiply that by a third g. So. I get 3mg minus t equals 3m times a third is just mg. So rearranging this, you get that t is equal to 2mg. Because you, I always just think about that as the t and the mg are kind of just swapping places, really, aren't they? Um, hang on, though. My answer's in terms of m. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah. That's OK, isn't it? Remember, we said that last lesson. We would expect it to be in terms of m. Part B of the question, well, I've already done the, what was this thing called, F equals MA? What was the posh phrase we called for that that you might see in an exam question? Equation an equation of motion. Good. So I'm now going to do an equation of motion for particle P. Which direction will I resolve? Yep, I'm going to resolve upwards because that's the way it's moving. And I'm going to do F equals MA, and I'm going to do that for particle P. So what should the resultant, uh, what's the resultant motion for this one? Muhin, what's the resultant motion for this one I've got here? The resultant force, sorry. Yeah, the resultant force? Um, what, what, uh, t minus kmg. Yeah, it's T minus kmg because we're looking in the different direction. We're now going upwards. And that's equal to the mass, which is km, not kmg, but km, and the acceleration, which is a third g. Now, I don't know what the tension is. I also don't know what k is. Oh, hang on, I do know what the tension is, don't I? Yeah. The tension I've just worked out is 2mg. So I get 2mg minus kmg equals a third, and I'm going to just write it in the same order, kmg. What can I do everywhere here? I can cancel out the mg everywhere, which is why I don't often use g as 9.8 during a calculation. I tend to do it at the end in case anything cancels. So I get 2 minus k equals a third k. So 2 equals a third plus 1, which is 4 over 3 k. So k is equal to 6 over 4, just by multiplying and rearranging which is 3 over 2, or they wanted it as a decimal, 1.5. OK? So although in the previous one we did equation of motion, equation of motion, and then we did simultaneous equations, that's because we didn't know the tension and we didn't know the acceleration. In this case, though, we didn't know the tension and we didn't know a mass, which allowed us to do an equation of motion that directly found us the tension. Then we looked at the separate one equation of motion to see what would happen after that. Part C, who thinks they can remember? What is the modelling assumption that the pulley is smooth? Tension is equal throughout. Very nice. The tension is equal throughout. 
And we actually did use that, didn't we? We used that by replacing T with 2mg over here. The reason it is equal throughout, I said this before, is if it wasn't smooth, it might be like rusty or it might have friction, which means one side might be tugging down really hard and the other side might be quite loose. So that's why the tension is equal on both sides there, okay? What was the bit that was trickier about this one? Because it definitely was a bit different. What do you think made it trickier, Orisa? Ah, okay, yeah, in these, so this is a really good example to say, if we can leave G in, we leave G in and we just use it as a variable because often it's going to cancel out. We really only use G right at the last minute or if it's like something that's completely by itself, we might change it to 9.8. Good, so it's a good example to have looked at there. Um, right, I will, actually, I think we'll keep going straight away with this one. So we're now going to try and make these questions. Do you remember I told you we're not going to do part D, we're not going to do part E, we're not going to do these end parts of the questions. That's what we're going to be working on in today's lesson. We're really going to be trying to think about what happens next in these kinds of things that we've got. Um, so actually, I will separate this because I think that would be convenient. 